Okay, so I just wanted to make a quick video to show the current state of my app after some hard work, maybe two weeks hard work. I mean, I've been working on this thing a long time, but the last two weeks has been hectic. So I just want to show the current state of the app. Okay, welcome back. So if I run the app, just ignore the code on the left hand side and the app will run in the simulator over here. Okay, and then the app is open. At the bottom here is just showing the path for the database, but let's focus on the simulator. So at the moment, what we have is like, we have a courses table where it will just list the name of the course and the number of students in that course. I've got a test course over here. If you click on one of the courses, it should open a page for the experiments and as a title, it will have the course name. We open the experiment and we'll see the experiment number on top as the title and a list of reagents or solutions. And if we click on one of these, and then we should go to the calculate page. And what this does is it takes the number of students, it takes the dispense volume. You have to input the group size. I usually have to ask course coordinators what the group sizes are. So they vary. Sometimes students work individually, sometimes they work in groups. Perhaps for this experiment, I think they work in groups of two. So I'll just put in two and then I'll calculate. And then it should tell me how much liters to prepare. Another example is maybe with the same experiment, we can change that in there. And yeah, if it's smaller than a thousand, then um, usually it will say in milliliters. And I've got the code in over here, which is doing all of that logic. The first thing that I worked on with this experiment was to get the calculated logic correct. Once all of that was correct, then I could move on to just getting the information from the databases or the database, the one database that I'm using at the moment, just getting all the information and we can add students. At the moment, I've got an alert controller. So if we put like a test course and I'm just typing this in, I'm not gonna use the, the keyboard over here, but you can use the keyboard. Perhaps for the total, we'll probably just put in two, three, three. I'm just making up numbers. When you go into that, then you can again add an experiment. When you click the plus button, then you see add new experiment. And then you can put the name and the number again. So I'm gonna have to put in a experiment number and name. I'm just gonna put in some arbitrary values here, test experiment. And then you can dial down and the same thing with the agent, you can just add a reagent as well. And you can see I'm adding it over there. And then once we go into there, then that information that I just added over there, it will come, although it's stored in the database and I'll show you now. Um, and it will also come over here and you just have to add the group size and then you'll get the, the calculated volume. Obviously I have to add the analysis, how much chemical was used during the experiment and how much waste was generated and all that. The thing that I'm the most happy with is that all of this data now persists. So if I just open the database over here and let's say we are on experiments now, so let's just let's go back to courses and you can see over here we've got different information there but if we refresh the database and you'll see the information is up to date and if i perhaps just delete this one over here i have to just refresh the database you can see the information is deleted so so happy that it's actually persisting in the database and you can see over here we've got all the experiments but if we go into one course then it's only got that course those courses for the experiments if i delete one over here and refresh you'll see it's deleted over there but what's happening here is that only the experiments for each course is in there so if i add an experiment for maybe for my test course again add another one if we add that over there and refresh again, you'll see it adds for the experiment, but you'll see it, it's only visible for that experiment. It won't, it won't be visible for any of the other experiments because I'm using a filter with the databases to only get the relevant experiments for each course. If you look at the reagents, although they are many over there, you'll only see the relevant ones for each experiment, which is fantastic. That's the way that I would like to use the database. You can see it's five here, but there's many more there. And I haven't added one for this experiment, so there's nothing there. Okay, so that's where that is now. And just to maybe minimize the database and just show a little bit of what's going on over here. And we can just probably stop the simulator. Okay, and we can just see some of the structure of how it looks inside there. Okay, I'm gonna just close that because I want to move on fast. I said this is gonna be a quick video. 
when I was using a static table that I was getting the information that was duplicating somehow. So um, this is just to do with an element inside core data. So one of the classes of fetch results controller, uh, I just need to figure out how that works properly because when I add an experiment, as can be seen here, then the experiment doesn't only go into like the one course or it just it gets duplicated in other courses as well. Um, so you can see like those reagents are in it for both, which is not the right way. I think this video is going on very long, but I just wanted to show the database and I think that's it. I've also noticed that when I run when I run this on a different simulator, like smaller phone perhaps, then when I come to the calculate button, um, when I go to this and I go to the calculate button and I actually have um, the keyboard pop up that it, it covers my calculate button. So I was designing on the iPhone 11, but <laughs> I've actually got an iPhone SE now. So I should have thought of that. But anyways, I can just move this up a little bit. Or when I use a static table, then it will actually move up automatically because it will scroll up on its own. So there are still a few tweaks to make. In fact, not just tweaks, there's still a lot of work to do, but this is how the app looks halfway. Yeah, just I'll keep you updated and thanks for watching.